In today's episode, Alex and I talk all about the first six weeks of our Leaner Together series. We also talk about the regret we have with sharing it with you guys and how the scale really hasn't been our friend. We'll catch you on the inside, but make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you could go to any concert right now, what would it be? I hate concerts. <laughs> Expand. I hate concerts. I don't I don't know what else to tell you. I do not like being in large groups. So the only way that I go to a concert is I'm super VIP or I'm backstage. <laughs> backstage. So I, something away from large crowds. Okay. I do not like being nut to butt with a bunch of <laughs> random people in this very jammed crowd. It's not my thing. Yeah, standing room only. Definitely not my thing. I'm not much of a concert guy. I'll enjoy the music, but I will enjoy the music at the comfort of my own home. I looked for tickets for a few people that I thought that we'd be interested in. And as soon as I saw standing room only, I was like, absolutely not. I'm not going to this concert whatsoever. We went to that Mike concert last year, two years ago, whatever it was. And that solidified things for me. Oh, big time. <laughs> big time. That also the crowd was there and you never know you never know what you're gonna get yeah. mike's audience i mean is the largest array of people and i think that we are a massive outlier of the the median of his audience we probably are yeah <laughs> so that solidified things that i do not really enjoy concerts all that much all right then if you could meet any artist right now who would it be any artist <sighs> Probably Mike. I mean, I, I'm not overly infatuated with any artist right this moment. I normally have an artist of some sort that I'm a huge fan of, but right this moment, I haven't done a whole lot of consumption of music. And so I don't have any. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Hans Williams. Mm -hmm. And so I've been enjoying his music. But outside of that, hasn't been anything anything for uh, for you? No, no country music stars in there. <laughs> no country music no stars. No country people. You're just you see, <laughs> my wife is not a huge fan. And most of the time when I'm listening to music, I'm with my beautiful wife. And so I just kind of have to let go of any country music <laughs> enjoyment that I have. You literally are listening to something all day. I'm not with you all day. Yeah, but it's a bunch of like lo-fi beats and nothing that's actually of substance pertaining to lyrics and those things. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And so if I got to pick one podcaster that I listen to on a regular basis, it'd be Tom Segura. Oh, I would pick Tom Segura. I too. would love to have a coffee with Tom Segura. That would be something special. Dream come true, honestly. He and Christina, I think I would have a blast. <laughs> I think I would piss myself. <laughs> It'd be amazing. I think a double date is that, really set in that, stone for us. I don't even know how to prepare myself for such a thing. I would review all of my favorite podcasts <laughs> and have a laundry list of questions in my mind ready to go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what other podcasts are you listening to right now? Um, as you say that, I really don't know. I feel like I've been listening to you got Two Bears, One Cave. You've got Your Mom's House your mom's house, both with Tom on them. And then I, I'm listening to Pat McAfee's show. It's kind of a podcast, kind of not. And then that's really about it. I've been listening to a handful of Alex Hermosi type interviews. Um, with those, I feel like I go through seasons in which what different um, business individuals or, or motivational speakers of sorts. I feel like I go through seasons of enjoying mm -hmm. that particular person and what they're saying is resonating with me at a certain period of time. And so right now there's some things that um, Alex Hermosi has been speaking to that has resonated with me of wanting to be better as a leader and those different factors. And so um, I've been consuming a little bit of his media and that's really about it. Yeah. I feel like you you keep up to date on a handful of podcasts. Like I feel like there's other ones, but they do vary like you have a core group of maybe 10 but you kind of go between them all yeah like depending on who's being interviewed i, I like a handful mm -hmm. of different podcasts yeah it's interesting because i don't listen to a ton of fitness based podcasts myself it's like i i can only consume i can only consume so much fitness on a day-to-day -day basis within my check-ins, recording the podcast, us recording YouTube videos. I need to have some outlet of different content or media that allows for me to disconnect a little bit. And I find that listening to podcasts in the evening, watching podcasts, because I more often enjoy watching podcasts relative to just listening to them, um, has been that avenue for me. 
And you're also like going through education where you're watching someone present. And so then tacking on a podcast that's fitness on top of that, that can be difficult of exactly what you say. You're just consuming it 24 seven and your brain does need a break from it. Right. Okay. So enough of the interview with me. What's, <laughs> what's yours? Are you enjoying any music right now? Do you have any favorite podcast? I don't know. I get in such weird phases with music where I get so burnt out on the music that I'm listening to. And then I might still be finding new music. Like recently, I found some new music. Do not ask me the names of the songs or the artists. It is just on my liked list on Spotify. I cannot keep track because I'll be on like Discover Weekly or The Morning Mix or something to that degree. And so it's just new music coming through. So I don't always hold on to each person's name. And it, but right now I just feel like there's, because I'm getting in so many steps, then I'm doing different tasks that I just will have like one headphone in to do that I just feel like I'm listening to a lot of music. So then I get a little bit burnt out, but then I'm like, what do I do? Just sit in silence. So I was even deciding that while I was getting ready of normally I have on something on YouTube or music. And I was like, I don't really want to consume anything. I kind of feel burnt out. So I just sat in silence. I don't think that sitting in silence is a bad thing. Oh, no, I don't think it's bad. But I also like just having like a like strumming of a guitar or piano in the background more often than not, just a little bit of something um, rather than the silence more often than not. I just love music. So I hate when I get a little bit burnt out on it because I want to just enjoy it all the time. I think that's why I listen to so many different genres. I yeah. just listen to, I think I listen to literally everything. And I feel like we, I just had a friend in town who I haven't got to spend a ton of time with. And he had made the comment and another friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a while made the comment a few weeks ago that uh, they thought that the music that they listen to would not be something that I enjoy. They turn it on and it is something that I enjoy. And so it's just funny because I feel like a chameleon within my uh, music choices. Yeah. You do have a lot of different, different buckets you pour into there. Never know what you're going to get there either. <laughs> So dieting, we are freaking halfway through this diet. How are you feeling six weeks in? To be honest with you, I am feeling a little run down. Uh, the first four weeks were ones in which I was thriving off of the excitement and that initial fat loss that had come about. As we move into the second third of the diet itself, I knew that it was going to be a little bit of a push, especially with the things that we had going on from a life standpoint. I knew that things were going to start piling up a little bit if I didn't stay on top of things. And um, we had the friend in town this past weekend where I really wanted to be 100% present with him. And I was, and it was amazing. And it was great seeing you, Seth, if you're listening to this. Uh, we got to go to the Memorial Tournament, which was my first PGA event that I've ever gone to. Uh, I'm not a golfer, but I do have an appreciation for watching golf. So it was cool to be at the event. It was scorching hot. If you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching the podcast, my forehead is very sunburnt. I'm peeling on my forehead right now. It looks I much did. better. Thank you. I, uh, I wore plenty of sunscreen. It just was that hot and we were out there for that long. And so that was fun. And then the week prior to that, we had Courtney in town. And so it was back to back weekends of uh, action packed weekends to where we normally try to have some decompression time in that window, which it was decompressive just in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so energy wise, I was taken down a notch, but my cup was filled up with, with love and, and communication, just getting to spend time with people that I really appreciate. And so, um, I'm run down in that sense. I know this weekend will be a time where we do have some real downtime and I just need time to myself. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't had a whole lot of moments to myself right now. And I forget how valuable that is until I have weeks like this where I'm just go, go, go. Someone's here. I'm with someone almost the entire time of my day. And so I'm looking forward to just being by myself, having some time outside this weekend, getting to read a book and relaxing. So I need that very badly. I feel like it's just being able to 
have free time and not have things scheduled out because our life is so scheduled to be able to accomplish everything. I feel like I just need time to be and to do what I want to do. And I enjoy everything I do on a week to week basis, a day to day basis. But it's just being able to have like, hey, I can go and kind of get lost in something and I don't have to set a timer to get out of it. I can just go and do this thing. It's a unique season of life because I can't complain about anything going on. Um, it's just that I wish I had more time in the day. I wish that I had more time to do all the things that I have the opportunity to do at this moment. And this may be the first time that I can really say this of my adult life, that that's the case, because I feel as though in previous years where I've felt this level of rundown, there are things in my life that I'm like, dude, I would love to cut this out. I would love to not have to do this. And right now that's not the case. It's just the, a matter of not having enough hours in the day or, or uh, great uh, enough of efficiency to get all the things done. And I think that that's one of the things where I beat myself up mentally and I have to check myself consistently of, yes, could I be a, a touch more efficient all the time? Yeah, I can, I can shave off a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, uh, 10 minutes here, five minutes there. But in the grand scheme of things, I'm not a robot. Like I'm a human, I have to have moments to breathe and to, um, you know, there, there's gotta be buffer periods in place and it can't just be a um, robotic check, 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 check type day. And I think that oftentimes when people, and I know for myself, when I see someone else's schedule, especially a high performer and they post their schedule from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m., it's regimented to the minute type scenario. I get very caught up in comparison at that moment. Whereas that may be that person's schedule for a day or a week or a month because of some movie set or something along those lines. But the reality is, is that that's an overview of their day, not the exact to the moment structure, if you will. And uh, being able to zoom out on that is, is helpful. I agree with you of just wanting more time. And it, it, I'm so glad that we're on the same page with this because there's definitely been times where you're really run down and feeling like you need space. And then I'm like high on life, high on work or the opposite, or just in a place like you mentioned of not liking what we're doing, but knowing we just kind of have to put our head down and get it done. And I feel so overjoyed that there are I do enjoy everything that I am doing and everything that we're working for. And I just feel very aligned with you. I feel very aligned with physique development, what our goals are. They feel very clear. And that's an incredible feeling. But it's so hard because I, I do beat myself up. And I always have to remember that there's a difference between wasting time and taking time. And I get caught up in that because I want to be the most efficient because I hate the feeling of wasting time. Like that is so shitty when you get to the end of the day and you're like, I, I could have gotten things done, but I just sat around and wasted time, whereas it's extremely productive to take time for yourself and recognize it shouldn't be just thing, 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 thing. And it might still have to be scheduled in by that minute by minute, but scheduling in that time to take for yourself so you can be more productive and kind of reworking what efficiency means. Because I used to think efficiency just meant being able to be a robot and work, 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 work. But I'm trying to realize and pushing myself to realize that being efficient also includes including breaks for yourself. Right. And so- when we talk on dieting, how do you feel like the first half of the diet has gone for you? There's been ups and downs, of course. And I actually had a realization, I think it was last week, that actually the last time I dieted when I prepped was similar start to how this has gone. And I, I kind of forgot about it just because I didn't want to compare the two because I didn't want to set an unrealistic expectation for myself of, okay, this is exactly how this diet went. That's how this is going to go when a prep and a lifestyle diet are extremely different. So I didn't want to put myself in that comparison mode. I didn't want to look at where I was six weeks into that versus this. But I realized that at the beginning of that, I was 
gaining weight or keeping the same weight, but my photos were very clearly improving. And I remember getting in my head and just recognizing I had to put my head down and keep working. And then things obviously got to where they needed to go. I achieved the best physique in regards to competing that I ever have. And I was so proud of that. But it it started rocky, but I had to get my head on straight to be able to keep going. Because if I didn't, and I just was like, oh, I'm not seeing the results that I want right this second, I would have backed off and then I would have never seen those results. But being able to recognize that the scale is just one metric and you are such an incredible coach. If I were to doubt you not being able to like see the whole picture, then that would be so, so silly of me. (laughs) And knowing that you know what you're doing, I trust you with everything that you're doing. And that being able to know that again, you're going to see that full picture. So that gave me a ton of peace and allowed me to get out of my head. But I just had to remind myself that because it's human nature to a certain degree, if you see that, and then you might start to get a little bit stressed or overwhelmed. And then you might stop listening to your coach or stop doing what was put into place. And I'm just grateful to have someone I know is going to look at all the data, make the decision, and I don't have to sit and worry about that. I can just do. And since I got into that headspace of just doing and not focusing on the scale, my physique has been improving and I've been really happy with how it has been. It's just being able to not hold myself to just that number. When it comes to the goals that you had going into the diet, do you feel like you are ahead? Do you feel like you were behind? Do you feel like you're on target? How do you feel you are uh, like momentum wise heading into the latter half of the diet itself? I would say probably that I'm just in the right place because I definitely don't feel ahead, but I don't need to. I just need to feel in the right spot, which is another important reminder. And I don't feel behind. I feel like I'm in the right groove. And with that groove comes some of that momentum because I had to get over that hump of possibly doubting myself or maybe not seeing how I thought things were going to go and being able to just remove myself of that and get things done. And now I feel like it's just, this is what it is. We're in a diet. We will be for the next six weeks. And so it's about getting my systems in place on a day-to-day basis just to be able to execute that. And since we do have the accountability of each other, and I know each of us hold so much respect for one another in that, but also the accountability of doing this publicly that I'm not going to be soft. I mean, I'm not going to not finish it. So I don't really have a doubt of, oh, am I going to do it? Do I feel like I'm going to accomplish it? It's just, it's going to get accomplished and I just have to do it. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Speaking to doing it in the public eye and having on YouTube, talking about it here on the podcast a lot. Have you had moments that you have regretted doing it that way? Like, do you have moments where you're like, man, I wish we wouldn't have done this? I don't think regret is the right word. I think that it has been a good experience to recognize that things don't go always as planned. Of I thought it was just going to be both of us. We we're in a great spot to diet. We're going to see everything trend the way it's supposed to. And we're going to say, hey, this is how you diet. And then show a perfect example of dieting. And so I think that there was some self-doubt of, oh, my gosh, am I going to be able to show these people and make sure that they know that we really know what we're talking about and what we're doing and having that doubt in that regard. But I didn't feel regret because, again, I have so much faith and belief in you and I and what we're capable of that that doesn't really creep into my mind anymore of, oh, can we do this? It's just more of when we're going to do it or how it's going to happen instead of thinking, can we do it? I don't, I don't think that it's ever been, I, I, when I think about like regret or not having 
wanting to put it on social, it's less about our ability. I, I think that you can look at my rap sheet, you look at the rap sheet of physique development over the last eight years and understand that we know what we're doing. I don't think that that's within question. I think that um, the moments in which I've questioned things has been more centered around the stress that it's added to the diet itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing a, a full YouTube video every single week that's educational as well as updates and walking everyone through every single detail and providing so much free information that it's a lot and it's a lot on our team. And, and I feel that stress on the team. I feel that stress on us. Um, it's a challenge for sure. And uh, I, I don't think that I understood the challenge of what that was going to be and, until we got into it and how regimented we have to be to be able to get everything done and have things on time because we've we've ran late at times we've um it probably looks from a social standpoint that everything's been <laughs> very crisp and and clean and all those different factors and i assure you that it's been <laughs> very messy at times <laughs> and um, i'm just very fortunate for the team that we have around us uh, the three of us most specifically i should say with me you and miguel uh, do, digging <laughs> long, long days miguel having some very long nights of editing to make sure that everything is uh, great when the videos come every single week and so that's the the one thing that just continuing as we may do this more in the future, having greater preparation in place, having a little bit more help from Miguel <laughs> will be something that I, I prioritize for sure. That's a good, or that's an interesting way to think about it that obviously I wasn't thinking about when you first asked the question. And there are definitely weeks where I'm like, I wish we could just skip this week. Uh, I'm happy to do the work in regards to the diet and I'm happy to do my work, but this adds a lot more to the plate, which also takes into account what effect it's having on dieting. Because I think that people just look and they recognize that dieting is a stress on their body, but sometimes they toss out the window what it looks like uh, added with the other stresses on their body. And being in the spot of maybe not having the best sleep, although I do think that that we have prioritized that and done a great job on that side. But being in a spot where you just have higher work stress and what it's putting you through, that's also added on top of the stress of dieting. And that means you got to be able to mitigate all of that stress or manage that stress. And I think that's especially with us talking about the weekends where that comes into place if we have a lot going on, because then we don't have as many ability or availability to go ahead and make sure we're taking care of that stress. Stress is going to be one cup. I think that many individuals think that you're going to have this cup of physical stress, emotional stress, mental stress uh, that your body can take on. But when, in reality, it's just one cup. And so the more mental stress that you have in place and the more emotional stress that you have, the less physical stress you're going to be able to take on. And so if we are in a place where mentally and emotionally, um, physically, we're more drained, we're going to have to pull from somewhere. It's not just going to be push harder, push harder. You can take on more. The cup's going to somehow <laughs> grow. It's like there's only so much bandwidth that we have from a stress standpoint. And so we have to be smart on that side of things. And I'm recognizing that right now where – I'm speaking with Adam. Adam is the individual who is coaching me uh, through the diet itself and uh, speaking on backing off of training a little bit, focusing more on just outdoor activity and giving myself a little bit more rest here as we push on to the, the latter you know, six weeks of this diet. I'm going to need some recharge time. And this is a, a side tangent on the topic of people saying that deloads are unnecessary. It's like, bro. <laughs> get right. out of your fucking textbook and yeah. just look at real life. Mm -hmm. Like there are going to be periods in which people need to back off. Like I'm, I'm sorry that the literature isn't showing you that this is a necessity, but real life application and working with athletes shows me that deloads are going to be a necessity. And so side tangent, but <laughs> I mean, even last week, I ended up unplanned taking, I believe it was five days off of training. And looking back, there really wasn't a way for me to train capacity and bandwidth wise of I would have dug myself into a hole that would have been really hard to get out of. 
Did I want to train? Would I have loved to train in those instances? Yes, but I did really focus on still getting my steps and doing what I could. And while it was mentally hard to let go of, oh my gosh, I just kind of took an unintentional deload this week, that it was what I needed to be able to keep going and at that high capacity. And I think both of us have gotten so much better at being aware of that because a lot of that takes awareness of what all's going on in your life and what that output is instead of thinking like, oh, I can just take on one more thing. I can take on one more thing. I think this speaks to the lifestyle application. Like in a 12-week, three-month dieting phase for any human who is uh, running a business has a family, all these different things, there may be scenarios that things come up that they're not able to train in the week. And it's not a matter in which they should just throw away their diet because they can't train. Like just optimize the things that you can control and then get back to the thing that you're having to unfortunately remove from your schedule because of circumstances and be able to continue on with the diet itself. And I think that that's the whole point of the Leaner Together series is having that in place to really show that this is this is real life. This is how things have to be done. It's not this picture perfect textbook way of doing things. Things are going to be messy. Things are going to happen that you didn't plan for, and you've just got to keep rolling with the punches. And so I think that's the the real value that people are going to take out of this series and, and really be able to apply into their own life. I know in a recent episode of this series, you talked about how sometimes you might still get in your own head, even as a coach who knows all of the factors, how to look at data, all those different aspects. So do you find that you have been getting more in your head than past diets or that you have been thinking back to past diets of how your body has responded or even that scale weight of, oh, I've been this weight before. Why am I not that weight now? Does that mean I'm not doing as good? Well, I've had two weeks in a row where I have not been a fan of my photos. It's just been the circumstance of, um, I don't know, I just I haven't been happy with how they've looked. I, I feel like my efforts and what the scale is reading, what the biofeedback is showing should visually look different. And that's been a, a challenge for me. And, and I understand that it's just a matter of staying the course here. And I, I have some things that come to mind of me managing my stress better. I can feel my body is run down. I can feel that I need a little bit of, of recharge time as we talked about earlier in the, in the episode. And so, um, yeah, knowing what I know, it just allows for me to take a step back. And I think that trying to remove as much emotion as I possibly can, because it's almost impossible to have no emotion towards mm -hmm. something that you're committing so much time and so much effort into. But being able to see the scale, and you may immediately have an emotional response to that. Step off the scale, take a breath, understand that this is one data point within seven for that particular week. It is what it is. We'll see what it is next week or next tomorrow, and then be able to continue on from a week to week standpoint. The same thing goes with the physique photos is that I've been able to look at them, take my screenshots, understand that I haven't been a huge fan of them, but it is what it is. We'll get a fresh set next week and see if we need to make adjustments. And so um, trying to stay as data driven as we can, trying to stay as reactive to the data relative to React relative to being reactive to my emotions of what I feel for the diet is very, very important, but also paying attention to what my body is, is telling me within how I'm feeling and when I need rest and when I need to push and pull back and those different factors. It's a, it's a complex thing to do. It's, it's certainly not easy. And I think that for a first time diet or even someone who's been tracking for just a few years and you've maybe dieted two or three times, you still are figuring this out. I'm still figuring things out about myself because how I dieted five years ago oh, yeah. looks a lot different than how I diet now and how my body's responding, how my body is pulling body fat and those different things. Like I was not someone who lost body fat quickly from my legs and my arms previously. It was kind of, that was two places where I was kind of the inverse of the norm where I would pull more body fat off of my chest and my, my abdomen first. It was very weird how my body pulled initially this go around. I'm significantly leaner through my arms and through my legs. And my midsection is holding on to more body fat than what it 
used to. And if I was to just look at those pictures side by side, I'd be like, man, I am carrying you know more body fat than I would I would like. But the reality is it's just dispersed differently. And um, I, I think that just giving yourself grace and and being okay with things not going exactly to plan and, and continuing to push on is the most important thing. So um, in a long way of answering your question, that's the answer I've got for you. I feel like you have become such a pro at removing that emotion out, especially looking back at the last prep of you had to remove a ton of emotion as my husband and really channel that to be unbiased and look at that as my coach. So what are some of the things that you do to try and remain unbiased or unemotional? Because I I really think that you're truly incredible at it. And this has been the best that I've ever seen you be with push and pull, especially for your Yourself. It has been like I've seen you through all different phases and not just talking about when you dieted last, but through the, the past few years of what push and pull looks like for you. And I feel like you're in such a better spot. I would say first is reps. I've just had a thousands upon thousands of repetitions within myself, but also with, with my clients and being able to work with them on different things they have going on within their dieting phase or within their surpluses or what have you. Um, One case comes to mind actually from this morning is that I had a client who was just beating herself up in her check-ins. You know, the scale hasn't been overly responsive uh, to what we've tried to do over the past couple of weeks. And she was just very mean to herself through the whole check-in and mentality was in a poor spot, all those different things. And what we moved to was that we were going to take some time away from the scale. We're going to continue to track food just so that we continue to nourish her body. But all I wanted to hear about was what were the instances in which you gave yourself grace in a moment in which you would have normally tore yourself down? And then I wanted to hear 10 nice things she said to herself throughout the week. That was the only two things I wanted to check in with next week. I didn't care about physique photos as great as those would be. I'm not really concerned about it because at the root of it, her stress is the biggest detriment that she has going on right now. How she's speaking to herself is the greatest detriment. It's not that the food's out of whack. It's not that the training is wrong. It's literally how rude she's being to herself. And so giving herself that grace and that kindness is going to allow for her to be in a better headspace and have greater optimism for her day. Thus, she's going to see better progress next week. I have almost every guarantee in the world. And so as I've seen so many cases like that, it's allowed for me to function that same way. Like I, as I've talked about on the podcast a number of times, I have been notorious for being extremely rude to myself and speaking very negatively to myself when things don't go exactly how I want them to. And I've, like I've said, I've, I've seen that flip of the switch and moving to optimism and keeping a more positive headspace and that being the catalyst for people to really make the progress that they want to make. And I realize that the negativity or speaking to yourself very poorly is not benefiting you or anyone around you. And so it's like, it's net negative big time. Whereas the optimism and having the positivity is net positive for the people around you. And at worst, it's net neutral for you and your physique or whatever the goal is for you at that time. And so I will 100% take the net neutral or net positive response to everything over the excessively net neutral option that I very often chose to do previously. And so by having those examples and being able to weigh the pros and cons and see it on paper or, or see it in my mind as I'm thinking through it, it becomes so painfully easy I shouldn't say painfully easy. It becomes easier Mm -hmm. to make the decision to opt for the positivity and the optimism relative to the negativity. And so that would be the thing that allows for me to detach from the emotion more so than anything, because oftentimes the emotion is in a negative space. But then on the opposite side, let's say you do have a crazy um, low or you hit a big PR within your training and you go the other direction. A lot of, a lot of positivity comes from that, not getting too caught up in having that low weigh in, because guess what? You, you may have another low weigh in the next day, but it's very possible that you could have a high weigh in the next day. And I had that exact example last, or just a few days ago where I weighed in at 212.6, which was a big low weigh in for me. And then that next day I weighed 215 
I didn't, nothing changed. I had better sleep. According to my aura ring, I had better sleep the night before. My meals were more on point that the day prior. I did nothing wrong. It was just the situation at hand. I probably just had better glycogen stores, better uh, fluid retention inside my muscle. There was nothing wrong with my physique, but the scale itself, I could have been very been out of shape. Um, but understanding, you know, those different factors was helpful. And so trying to stay more even keel and not getting too caught in the two highs and two lows is, is a, a challenge, but something that is tremendously beneficial through dieting or just your health and fitness journey in general. And definitely took a lot of practice yeah, and reps to get there. a lot of there. practice, a lot of practice. <laughs> a similar thing happened to me with the scale this week of I came back, I was out of town this weekend, out of my routine, had a few different food options uh, than I normally would have had, even though I still hit where my food was at. I came back thinking, oh, the scale weight might be up. You didn't have the best sleep. You had some long days. You're a little bit out of routine, but like, don't worry about it. I was kind of giving myself a little bit of a pep talk before I got on the scale so I could mentally prepare myself. And I get on the scale and it was actually a number I hadn't seen in a few weeks. It was a, a, a new low in a sense. Uh, and I was like, oh, freaking awesome. I rock. I did such a good job this weekend and then killed everything when I was at home and got my day all set, went to sleep, had a good night of sleep, had like great bowel movement in the morning. I got on the scale thinking like this is going to be even lower. And it was like two or three pounds higher. And I also was supposed to start a refeed that day. And in my mind, I started to think, you shouldn't eat that food. You just had a higher weigh in. Just eat the lower food and whatever is going to happen. And I was like, no, because the scale can change in those instances. That's also why we look at averages. And that's also why we look at the full picture and look at pictures individually. I always like to look at my physique before I get on the scale and have things that I point out about it. And I don't mean that and I sit there and I pick my body apart. I'm saying from a coach's eye, I will look in the mirror and think, okay, it does look like you have a little bit of bloating or inflammation going on. Or maybe your legs look a little inflamed from walking. Or maybe you look really good and you feel great about your body. So then when I step on that scale, I've already taken inventory of the visual component. And then I can pair that with the scale and have a much more objective time with the scale instead of just that number. Because I also find people getting so caught up in past weights that they've been of, okay, I felt my best in the past at 110 pounds, but now I'm 120 pounds. So I need to get to that 110 to feel good. But hopefully if you have been, you know, watching our videos, following our advice, gaining muscle, growing those glutes, I hope that your scale weight isn't the same low that it was because muscle is going to be more dense. It doesn't weigh more, but it is going to be more dense so you can have more on your body and look better at a higher weight. And so I try to remind myself time and time again that the scale does not need to completely consume how I feel about myself or that number doesn't have to be the goal that I'm going for. It has to be paired with how I look and feel to be able to mean anything to me at all. I find that to be one of the most interesting things that people compare to previous fat loss phases or previous scale weights or what have you. They spend, they go through a dieting phase, they spend 10 months, 12 months, 14 months growing muscle tissue, their goal being to add tissue to their body. And then when they go through the next dieting phase, they're telling themselves of, why don't I weigh what I did last time? It's like you just intentionally spent a year plus trying to add to your body. And yes, now you're trying to remove body fat, but the scale readings from diet to diet do not need to match entirely because or if they do, that would be a sign that eh, you may not be all that you know great within your growth phase and may not have had the goal actually happen. Now, could you be the same weight and be leaner and carrying that more muscle tissue? Certainly. That mm -hmm. could very well be a possibility. But for the greater majority of people, it's going to be something where that scale reading is just sitting a little bit higher and your your leaner or you know whatever situation may be and so i really encourage using it as a data point to have as reference but not 
having it be the gospel and it being like, I have to be at this weight to look this particular way and those different things. I talk to a lot of clients about that coming out of a diet too, because they, I've had clients say, well, I'm just back to the weight where I started. And I'm like, no, 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 let's look at pictures here and let's look at what else you've accomplished. But you're not just back to the same weight. You are that same gravitational pull towards earth, but your body does not look the same. And I wouldn't want it to look the same because the goal was to grow or to lose fat or whatever it was. And that includes that scale weight changing and possibly evolving to a different weight where you might look better or feel better at that scale weight instead of just thinking, oh, last time I was this weight, I didn't like how I felt or looked. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. You talked about hitting that low and then having a few pounds up on the scale. Outside of that experience, how have you felt like things have been going or just going into the next six weeks? I have felt like the diet itself has been uh, challenging, but not overbearing. So I, I feel as though that the goal that I had set from a scale standpoint, um, we're on target for from top to bottom on averages. I'm a little quote unquote behind, but it was a pretty lofty goal to begin with. Um, but I, I prefer to be in a, a lofty goal relative to a easy to attain goal, if you will. So if we fall short of the goal, I'm still going to be very happy with the progress that was made. So um, with that being the case, I'm, I'm happy with those scale readings. And it's interesting, I, I had anticipated that with those scale readings, I would visually look different as I, as I talked about. But um, it, it's going to be cool to see myself pull down the, the last time that I had done like a, a mini cut, which that was the mini cut itself was inadvertent almost, um, where it wasn't entirely planned. It was just the season of life that I was in and ended up losing a decent bit of body mass. I wouldn't say it was all body fat in that time frame because of the speed in which everything came off. Um, I got down to 209 and the lowest that I've gotten to now is that 212.6 reading. And so um, to feel as though that I'm three-ish pounds away from that low that was maybe six months ago, and probably leaner than I was at that time, carrying a little bit more tissue than I was at that time um, is an interesting feeling. Going into the remaining six weeks, I am ready for the challenge, I believe. I think that having this weekend will be a time in which I will put my big boy pants on and, and get prepared more so. I am running on fumes this week. It's just the reality of the situation. And so I've got to trudge through for another, we're halfway through Tuesday. So I am, I've got, you know, three and a half days to sack up and get <laughs> after it basically. And past that, I'll have two days to really uh, decompress and, and get my head right because at, like next weekend we head to Chattanooga and then, um, we're, we're just, I mean, it's moving and grooving. So it's, it's, uh, it's moving quick and just making sure that I'm taking advantage of every day and not putting myself in a situation where I am getting complacent because at this point it's easy to get complacent where I've put in you know, six weeks of a hundred percent effort every day. And at that point, it's easy to be like, all right, man, you can, you know, back off the gas a little bit here and give yourself a little bit of a breather or what have you. And that's could be the case, I suppose, but it's not what the intended goal is. And so I need to keep my sights set and uh, continue to press forward. Well, I will say this is the leanest that I've seen you in a very long time, and you are crushing it And when it comes to the diet and when it comes to work, and it's just been really great to be able to do this together because I don't think that either of us would be doing as well as we are without having the other one to lean on or just to know that we're working towards a similar goal. I agree. There's no way I would do it by myself. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to provide that for you as long as you keep providing it for me.